So, Matt Pipenberg and myself, we're back for another um, MAM chat. To welcome back, Matt. And, and it's certainly the most interesting time to have uh, the discussion we're going to have now. Uh, and, you know, what has happened since our last discussion is just something that is unreal. It would be totally wrong to say that it's unexpected because certainly if you, if you look at what Putin ha has been declaring for the last um, eight years, I mean, that, that, that was always on the cards that he would do something. And he's told the world, nobody has listened, of course. Mm -hmm. And now we're starting to see the consequences and they are dire and we don't know what they're going to lead to. It could be pretty horrible for the world. We are in a war cycle, as we know, um, that's what, what uh, the cycles have been telling us for a while and, and, and what a start to that war cycle. Now, yeah. Matt, we've seen so many um, no, countries starting with uh, uh, sanctions against uh, Russia. And, and right. you know, so we have to ask ourselves, do, do the countries actually understand the consequences of these sanctions? Can, they, can the West um, and all the sanctioning countries, can, can they afford it? Um, uh, and it would be interesting to hear your view about, about the, the, how, how the, the West believes that it's going to play out and how it would really play out. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important question, and we'll write about that this week at greater length, but it's something that we have to discuss realistically without, without taking political sides here. Ultimately, this is a, about financial implications in our, in our wealth preservation, but unfortunately or fortunately, geopolitics plays a role in that. So as gray and vague and, and polarized as politics can be, math is relatively more honest. And if we look at the cold math, behind the chest puffing, whether it's Boris Johnson, Condoleezza Rice, or you know Joe Biden, or Western leaders, there's a lot of uh, galvanizing uh, rhetoric right now and financial sanctions and war cries on the, on the West. And again, without delving into the you know, honesty or dishonesty of that or the moral values of that, let's just look at the simple math. There was a, a, famous, a famous observation by Condoleezza Rice in 2014 on the German TV, I remember watching, at the time, she was a Russian expert, a secretary of state, and she said, well, listen, Russia's going to run out of cash long before Europeans run out of energy. That's a classic American statement, uh, underestimating reality in some ways, because if you look at the current math right now, and I'll, I'll pull up this chart in a second, but Russian reserves are actually the highest they've ever been, uh, despite the price of oil, which, will, of course, will only make the reserves go up higher if oil goes up higher. In addition... Getting the cash part wrong, uh, Condoleezza Rice got the energy part wrong, too. I don't think she understands, for example, that a country like Germany, which is the centerpiece of the European Union and is now dipping for the second time into recession with PPI inflation at 25 percent, the highest in 40 years. Germany gets more than 50 percent of its coal and gas from Russia through pipelines in the Ukraine and, and 35 percent of its oil from Russia. So. Boris Johnson can puff his chest and try and get the media off his back for his party habits and look at the war now. But the simple fact is guys like, uh, you know, Chancellor Schultz can't be as chest puffing as the UK for the simple reason that Germany relies on Russian oil. So I think Condoleezza Rice was wrong that Russia has more reserves than, than she believed in 2014. They certainly do now. You know, China and Russia have been stockpiling gold while the West has been printing money. That's just a reality. It's not a pro-Putin stance. It's just a reality. The Netherlands have been cutting down their oil expansion or their oil production rather than expanding it. So Western Europe does need Russian energy, whether we like it or not. And should we follow through with these sanctions and tough talk this through, understandably, given what's happening in the Ukraine for many people? Well, what that will do is it will force Putin to sell or export most of that oil to China. And that will be in yuan, not U.S. dollars. That will massively destabilize the world reserve currency, the petrodollar, which is the U.S. dollar, which oil was typically bought and sold. And if, if China and Russia decide to make their own market in oil, which is entirely possible. Yeah. You that know that, have... that when you say, yeah, it, it will uh, be, of course, oil and yuan, but also Russia. I mean, they are clever. So they could ask uh, China to... Uh, to buy gold, not use their own gold, buy gold and pay for the oil and gas in gold. Uh, exactly. uh, and that, that will uh, put, put a, you know, a rocket under the gold price. Um, and that will increase the reserves of, of uh, Russia, the gold reserves, and, and not diminish the ones of China. So, you know, these, 
There are so many of these type of games that will be played and, and nobody, um, you know, or very few in the West understand the consequences of what they're doing. Exactly. Again, there's the optics of headlines and there's the cold, hard reality of math. Mm -hmm. Again, this isn't trying to root for Putin or justify what's happened here. There's mistakes made on both sides. Right. You know, yeah. Clausewitz, Clausewitz famously said in the 1800s that war is just an extension of politics by other means. But in a nuclear era, war is an insanity. So I think we're going to see more financial conflict, hopefully, than military conflict or military escalation. Again, we're not politicians. We're speculating here. Uh, a nuclear option is simply insane. So what we're looking at is a series of unexpected and expected financial consequences, which we can only begin to imagine if this war escalates. I think assuming a non-nuclear option, which is an, an oxymoron, there is a no nuclear option. Uh, we're going to look at more financial uh, ramifications and stresses. And again, if we're talking about uh, peak oil right now or peak oil price is going even higher, that's inherently inflationary. The, the natural obvious reaction for countries like the U.S. in general or specifically in the West in general, at 300 trillion in combined global debt, they're going to have to create more money. There's not enough productivity to pay for the, the expenses that are going to happen and the, and the inflation that's going to come. So again, without bias towards our own warnings for years, this all leads towards gold because we're going to see further currency debasement. We're going to see further inflation in, in energy prices, uh, a potential spike in energy markets, which will be devastating to the world economy. Again, notwithstanding moral issues or political issues, we're just looking at cold math here. In a non-nuclear escalation, we're looking at financial escalation, financial stress. The best solution the West has always had for financial problems is the creation of fiat money more fiat money, debases for more currencies. Eventually, the gold price will, will continue to reflect this as it's starting to already this year. So again, these are somber, sober realities, um, again, without taking a stance, which brings me you know, to this question, as is, is the world gets more financially uh, cornered, um, you know, again, The Economist has uh, a famous cover now with, uh, with uh, Putin painting himself into a corner. I, I think that's a a noble image, but it's not necessarily accurate. I think the West is painting themselves into a corner as well. So with all of this happening now and not really being reported, I think honestly, understandably, the media is so politicized, whether you're left, right, or center, we all can agree on that. The, the question now of gold as a solution, which we know it is, goes to the other question of, of, of where do we store gold? What are the best jurisdictions? And this raises the question in the headlines that come out today, Egon. You know, Switzerland for the first time has broken its infamous neutrality stance. Uh, we've seen problems already in Western countries like Canada and the US with gold, but what are your thoughts on the zip code where gold is stored in Switzerland in particular and what's happened recently and how does that you know, impact our thinking right now? Yeah, well, that, that's an excellent question. And of course, you know, we, we're now in a period when there are so many uncertainties in the world and we also have a world of weak leadership you know, I mean, the, the, again, we're not taking sides, but, the, you know, the, the strongest of all the leaders now is Putin. That doesn't mean whether we are backing what he's doing. It's just saying that he knows what he's doing and he's known that for years. Whilst the West, uh, they're just fumbling in the dark. There is no strong leadership in the West at all. You know, as we know, President Biden is, is not, sadly, not respected by, by many people uh, in, in the in, whole world, and especially not in America. Boris Johnson is trying to grab headlines now because it's it, it's better for him to to uh, try to solve the bigger global picture, uh, which he's now doing, rather than um, fight against these uh, his own politicians who are blaming him for having Christmas parties against COVID rules, etc. So, you know, the, the world, there's no strong leadership anywhere and the world is in a mess and, and, and therefore uh, leaders take decisions um, that are not rational. And, and that brings us to Switzerland. So the Swiss president, you know, the, the president in Switzerland is only president for a year and he really has no power at all, more than the other seven members of, 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 of his government. Nevertheless, the, the, the current president, Cassis, he, he, he now, well, obviously with the backing of his cabinet, took the decision to back the uh, EU's sanctions against Russia. And that's unprecedented. And, and it really upsets me also that, that the, uh, Switzerland does this. 
uh, which is in total breach of the, the Swiss neutrality. So the, obviously you have to ask yourself, and we have to ask ourselves, and so the, the people who are, are you know, the, uh, investing in gold, and as we know, Switzerland is probably the biggest, is the biggest gold hub in the world. There are more private vaults in Switzerland than anywhere, uh, plus, of course, a lot of the the bank, Swiss banks, also the, the big ones, uh, Credit Suisse and UBS, uh, they store a lot of gold also, prob- uh, and probably some of that for, for, for Russians also. Um, so, so the question is, you know, how have things now changed in Switzerland to, to the extent that uh, we think it's not, not as safe as it used to be? Well, you know, our company, Matteron, Matteron as Management, was based on understanding risk and, and protecting the downside. In, in a complex world that we're seeing now, I mean, this, this question uh, is not as straightforward as it has been. Um, and especially when you, we are possibly getting into the Third World War, um, hopefully not, but um, the risk is there. Uh, so um, I, you know, from the beginning, I always focused on protecting the downside and protecting against uh, all, all kinds of risks. Um, and that's how we came to the conclusion of to, to set up the company uh, in, in Switzerland and to store the gold in Switzerland primarily, although we store in Singapore too. But so when I, you know, now these, uh, so we both agree that Switzerland, what they have done um, is unexpected, uh, but in today's climate, not totally unexpected because they feel enormous pressure from, from the West. Um, and, but it certainly is undesired from the point of view of Swiss neutrality. Um, and so we have to look at what are the best options now for people who are, who are uh, interested in wealth preservation and, and where they should store the gold. Um, so first, you know, you've got to look at the alternatives. What are there any better alternatives than Switzerland? Um, you know, let's look at the U.S., for example. I mean, the U.S. is, is as we see it, a bankrupt economy uh, and, and with, with a dollar that, that is... Uh, and not going to survive for a lot longer. It can always go up in the short term because of geopolitical circumstances. Uh, but over time, the dollar, like most currencies, is, is going to fall and go to zero. Uh, but you know, the big problem in America is the debt and the deficit. Uh, the uh, it, it would not be a surprise if, if America does what uh, Canada and Trudeau has just done, uh, i.e., to use. Uh, okay, he hasn't only t- he hasn't done it across the board. Trudeau, he, he said, he's given himself the right to to grab assets from people to to, uh, to find them because they supported the, the the truckers. But you know, America, when they take these measures or similar measures, it will be because they have to support their own economy because their debt um, is nobody's going to be able to to repay that debt, and they will need money from they will borrow money from the people. <laughs> They will borrow pension fund money. Uh, they will temporarily, uh, t- temporarily not confiscate money, but they will, they will certainly use use money uh, that the b- banks are holding for clients in order to finance their deficits. Obviously, they will call it just a temporary measure, and it might be temporary. But what I'm saying, the risk for for a financially bankrupt country, which the U- U.S. is, sadly. Um, is that they will take measures also which are uh, totally unacceptable to the people um, uh, and therefore assets can, can temporarily be frozen and temporary uh, can here mean months or, or not just months, but, but, but years because we know when the, when the country which ha- has a debt of, of uh, 90, 90 trillion dollars, um, the country as a whole, you know that that is not a debt uh, that that can ever be repaid, especially since the, there are uh, deficits, as we know it, increasing on an annual basis and running into you know, three trillion or more now, and it's, that's going to increase. So anyway, uh, so US is not a good place, in my view, um, uh, to store gold. Nor is Canada after what has happened. Canada has several vaults also. It's not a good place. Singapore, we do store some gold there, in a the minor uh, or, or to a lesser extent. But nevertheless, um, you know, Singapore is exposed to also. It's it's uh, it is between the Middle East and China, and you know, China is, might easily move now in, into Taiwan, 
um, and and uh, the Middle East crisis could also escalate with Iran taking sides of China uh, take, uh, and, and North Korea is on their side also. India could be also. So you have you have now that, that therefore that area and, and uh, Singapore is, is not as safe in my view as Switzerland also from the point of view that it hasn't. Switzerland is a democracy which is uh, 700 years old, over 700 years and, and Singapore is a young country which is not a democracy. But I wrote recently, and so, you know, the, 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 the dilemma is there isn't one um, ideal country anymore. Switzerland was, was uh, absolutely, without a shadow of doubt, the best country. In my view, it still is. All it isn't as good as it was because of the, the decisions that the government are taking under pressure from, from uh, Western governments and from the EU. Uh, mm -hmm. But, you know, we still have, which I wrote about in a recent article, when, when we have the rule of law here, um, and we have direct democracy, which means that in every law and every change of the constitution, that the people have a say. Um, uh, and also, the, the, not, not only change of the constitution, but people can actually come with a private initiative uh, and, and come with a new law. And, and if that's accepted, uh, then, then that becomes a new constitution and that from the people. Uh, I, the, the people can propose it and, and they can be voted upon. So that there's no country in the world that has that. Um, and therefore, politically, I still think that uh, Switzerland is the safest country in, in the world, although I wish that they wouldn't uh, take the side of, of, of these uh, pressurized countries uh, uh, like the EU and the US. Switzerland is, of course, financially also very strong, you know, the, 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 the debt uh, is is um, about forty percent of GDP, which is among the lowest in the West. Russia actually has a lower debt than GDP. Russia has seventeen percent, um, and of course there are until the COVID there there, there are always um, surpluses in in Switzerland also budget surpluses. So so uh, yeah. um, you know it's a financially extremely well managed country politically. Uh, although as we said they've taken decisions which we wish they hadn't politically. It is far superior to any country that I know about and have, have lived in or, or visited um, because of this direct uh, democracy. Uh, mm -hmm. So the, although, as I said, we, we have seen now temporary um, backing of, of the sanctions, I don't think that is anything uh, major, really. It's major from the point of view we, wouldn't, we would have wished it didn't happen, but it's, it is not going to change um, the the demo democracy in Switzerland uh, um, and the very lo long st standing principle that, that uh, Switzerland stands for, uh, and which, as I said, uh, you know, have kept the country neutral for, for centuries uh, and will continue to keep it neutral. So Switzerland is not going to join NATO. Um, they're not, they, they are still going to stay politically neutral. But you know, as I said, when 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 uh, when we come to crisis situation like today, they are taking weak decisions, which I wish they would. So uh, it, it's so. Therefore, you know, looking at the alternatives and looking at Switzerland is still the best. It's not as good as we, we would have wished it to be. Uh, but you know, the, the, the um, also remember that this is a gold hub uh, here in Switzerland. It's it's uh, seventy percent of the of the world gold is is manufactured here. Um, uh, the, the, most of the private gold is stored here uh, in the world and, and Switzerland is going to be very careful to protect that uh, and, and therefore I, I think it's still the safest country although we, you and I and, and, and in our company we look at risk all the time and we are very we're always re evaluating the, on, on a daily basis like I've been trying to go through now but there's going to be um, I, I don't see any change in, in, in the way our thinking now, but certainly we are willing to change if it's necessary to change, even the, the, or, or if the situation changes. Uh, war is totally, the consequence of war is totally unpredictable, and it can be, uh, depend on one action or one man at, at the wrong time. Um, and we've got to be prepared for that. In the meantime, as you said, Matt, the, the, the financial and economic consequences of what's happening now is going to speak massively in favor of gold, of course. We're going to ha have um, more money printing, more deficits, higher inflation, uh, and gold will continue to reflect that. So, 
you know, if anything, gold is now starting a major, major cycle up. Uh, I'm not saying today or tomorrow, but in the next uh, weeks or months, we're going to see gold moving uh, properly uh, up. And that's going to last for years. And at some point it will accelerate also. Um, uh, so, you know, it's absolutely right to have gold. The currencies will all, as you said, they will all go to, the, to zero now because of, of the, the mess the world is in. Yeah, but I think that the, the mess the world is in is part of the reason the Swiss neutrality conversation headline is being made. It's no coincidence. In many ways, it bolsters the larger, the larger discussion that the West is so financially bootstrapped by its debt and its extravagant fiscal and monetary policies for years that their biggest weapon today is mostly political. It is mostly verbosity. It's mostly headlines. It's mostly talk. And getting Switzerland to break neutrality is a big headline. It's proof that they're trying to add as much economic uh, talk, but they don't really have economic strength. So this headline of Swiss support is, is, is one of their more desperate tools. But to your point, Switzerland will never join NATO. It will not join a military war against Russia or in the West. So there's a lot of optics here because the math is so bad. The real math is so bad. It's not necessarily in favor of the West. Putin is not in the corner that we say he is. I'm not saying I want to be in his position, but as things get more financially desperate, they look for more headline optics of which the Swiss move is. But fundamentally, Switzerland is still the far better relative storage location, despite our bias. It's just high conviction. I certainly don't believe the U.S. or Canada and its policies under Trudeau or Biden with the mandate, which the Supreme Court shot down, or the way even Australia behaved during the COVID crisis, we know there are simply no other better zip codes. It is the choice that we made years ago, and it's still the choice we have now. Of course, if things change even more dramatically, we'll pivot. But I think, I think the arguments uh, we're making aren't apologies; they're realities. Yeah, and you know, as, as we said at the beginning, Putin uh, has flagged this for at least eight years, even before that. Uh, it doesn't mean that we agree with what he says, but you know, what, 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 when a, a Russian president with a lot of power uh, makes it clear that he finds it unacceptable uh, that uh, NATO surrounds him uh, with uh, anti or with missiles, um, and and uh, that the West controls uh, Ukraine since 2014, uh, when, when obviously before that it was a, a Russian-friendly leader. Um, and he, and, he made, and he made it clear that NATO is not going to come anywhere near or Ukraine or, or, or if they do, it's not acceptable. So we've known it, but, you know, the West has ignored the warnings and you can't ignore warnings of, 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 of uh, Russia or, or, or Putin, sadly. Uh, it doesn't mean, you know, you have to look at what you can do about it, but rather than fly, uh, fly to meetings of, of, of climate um, uh, change uh, in, in, in Glasgow, the tens of thousands of people going there and solving all these uh, problems that are, uh, that are, are, are much, much less significant and, and relevance, in my view, um, than what we're looking at uh, the geopolitical situation now. And, and the same thing, you know, they're, they're so, so we rather have woke ag agendas or climate control agendas rather than actually dealing with the major problems. And it's the same with the world economy. Everybody's ignored the world economy. No one gets together to solve that. But everybody uh, loves this peripheral um, uh, you know, uh, uh, issues which are really uh, of no consequence with the world or certainly a lot less consequence than what the world is facing now. So, so, yes. so yeah. you know, they should, have, they should have dealt with this a long time ago because all the signs were there. Uh, and, but they haven't. Uh, but... Uh, Cons you know, the, the consequences are that people are going to suffer more than, than, than ever now in all aspects. We don't know, you know, the, the, the ones who are involved in wars and we don't know how, how to what extent that will spread. Um, but financially, you know, this is happening, which is typical. This is happening at, at the top of, of, of the bubble of bubbles. Uh, and you've shown, you know, the, 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 that all the bubbles in, in graphs and articles uh, that the world is, is now facing. Um, and, you know, so when you have a, a war situation um, at, at the end of, of a, a bubble era in, in the world economy, uh, the consequences for the world, uh, not, not, not just socially and, and uh, on a, from a human point of view, but also financially, you know, they're going to be disastrous. 
So th therefore, yes. we're back to, you know, wealth preservation is still going to be absolutely essential. And, and still, as I said, um, of all the, the places that where you keep your gold, we still think Switzerland is the best, but if we admit that it's not as good as it has been, but there is nothing better to do that. Yeah, yeah for sure. Well, uh, we've got to, um, we are going to try to, to guide our, our, our audience, of course. And, you know, the, the one thing we, 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 nobody has a solution to this today from the point of view of what's going to happen in the world. We can't predict that. Uh, the only thing we know, and this is the thing we always focus on, risk is greater than it's ever been. Um, yep. And it's now materializing in war, which is, makes it even worse for everybody. Um, but uh, we will continue to discuss this uh, and a little, a little bit more frequently than we have in the last few weeks. So uh, thank you, Matt, for, for this time um, and um, speak soon again. All right, Egan. We'll look forward to it. Bye. Mm -hmm.